Welcome to an ALS Canada webinar partials where we take part of a webinar and we describe it in less than five minutes. Today I'll be describing the ALS Canada Brain Canada Discovery Grant entitled Cytosolic DNA Sensing in ALS Related Neuroinflammation. Now this story starts back in 2011 when two consortia, one led by Dr. Rosa Redemakers, the other by Dr. Brian Trainer, discovered the most prominent genetic cause of ALS where you have expansion mutation in a gene called C9 or 72. Now when a new genetic cause of the disease is found, Two of the things we have to do is to determine, first of all, whether or not there's a loss of normal function of the resulting protein causing motor neuron degeneration, or does that mutation cause a toxic gain of function of the protein, or in fact, is it both? One of the earlier studies to be done by Dr. Kevin Egan's lab was to do what we call knocking out C9 or 72 or removing it from a mouse to see if that loss of normal function could confirm motor neuron degeneration. What in fact they saw was a fatal autoimmune disorder and a neuroinflammation that could be very easily seen by something called splenomegaly, where the spleen is increased in size. After seeing this and alongside this, Dr. Bob Bailo at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles did a lot of work to determine whether or not the loss of normal function of C9 or 72 could continue looking at whether or not this causes an abnormal and immune inflammatory reaction. And in fact, through a number of prominent papers, he was able to describe that C9 or 72 has a role in this pathway. We've learned over the years that abnormal immune and inflammatory responses are important to ALS pathogenesis. So this continued to say that loss of function of C9 or 72 may be an important contributor to the disease process. This culminated in 2020 in a paper in a very prominent journal called Nature, where Dr. Bailo's group showed that c 9 72 was important in suppressing a neuroinflammatory pathway that has been described more recently called the sting-induced inflammation pathway. It is also known as the C-gas sting pathway and is something that we're learning much more about in recent years. What was very exciting was that a follow-up study by Dr. Seth Masters and Dr. Peter Crouch's group in Australia also showed in a prominent journal called Cell last year that mutations in TDP43 in mice also caused abnormal activation of C-gas sting in ALS. This is exciting because once you find the same pathway, which is affected in two different genetic models of the disease, you can start to say perhaps this is something that could be more widely a problem in ALS in general. What was even more exciting was when we learned that in Canada simultaneously and as yet unpublished, Dr. Honglin Liu and Dr. Neil Cashman at University of British Columbia had shown that an ALS, another ALS model mouse uh, conferred by mutation patients in SOD1 also had abnormal activation of the C-gas sting pathway. As a result of all this work, Dr. Liu and Dr. Cashman applied to an ALS Canada Brain Canada Discovery Grant for which they were successful to follow up their studies to see if the C-gas sting pathway might be an important target for therapeutics. The next step was to ultimately use cells to say, could they even see if another genetic cause of the disease could also lead to activation of this pathway? In this particular case, they will use the FUS mutation. It will also confirm the work of the Australians by looking at TDP43 mutations in these cells. And in a very exciting study, they will take those ALS uh, SOD1 model mice where they saw abnormal activation of the C-gas sting pathway and cross these with mice that have no C-gas protein or no sting protein to say that if you inhibit this the pathway being activated, does it actually slow the motor neuron degeneration and slow the disease processes in these mice? As we gain more and more information about this, this starts to say, could the C-gas sting pathway be a potential therapeutic target if inhibited in ALS in clinical trials? What's exciting about that is a number of drug developers are looking at potentially antagonizing or inhibiting the C-gas sting pathway as a potential mode of action in other diseases. And if companies like IFM Therapeutics or other companies might want to move these into potential clinical development for ALS, it could become a very exciting future target. This has been an ALS Partials webinar, and if you'd like to learn more about this, please check out the ALS Canada website, blog, or social media.